In this video, I'm going to give you five games to get new players into miniature gaming in 2020. Now, I made a video a little while back, well, almost two years ago now, about five games for new players to get them started into miniature gaming and the wider hobby. Well, that video still seems to get watched quite regularly even now, so I thought I'd do a 2020 update as there are a lot more games these days and to see if the ones I recommended back then would still make the list today. The first criteria I've set for these games is around ease of getting started and the speed to get you into your first games and getting them played. For example, are the models difficult to build and do you need a lot of hobby tools and maybe extra knowledge or experience before you can play that first game? Painting minis later is a consideration too, but I didn't want the game to be overly hard to get playing as a first point of entry. The second thing is cost. Now, Necromunda Dark Rising, for example, might be a beautiful box set and a great game, but the cost is a lot if you're just testing the water to see if miniature gaming is something a new player might like. Lastly, I'm only recommending games that I've actually played. There may be some fantastic ones out there. However, if I haven't played them, I can't really recommend them. That said, I have played a lot of different games and I'd love to hear from you in the comments about your recommendations. Stay tuned to the end for some honourable mentions that might fall outside of this criteria, but have been recommended by my awesome Facebook community as great starter games. With that said, let's start with the first one. In the last list, I included X-Wing, and whilst I still think that's a good option for a beginner, maybe the hobby side of it is less of a draw. You could also include Aeronautica Imperialis from Games Workshop in this category, however, there is a little more clipping and gluing required before you get it to the table for your first game. Blood Red Skies by Warlord Games, however, falls firmly into that aerial dogfight genre, however, the 12 miniature Spitfires and Messerschmitts that you get in this starter box are single-piece coloured plastic planes, and that means it's super fast to get you into your first game. There's the option to paint up your fleet if you want to, however, there's no tools or glue needed to get you started playing. The game player is very much streamlined with limited stats to worry about, and each plane comes with a neat movable base which denotes if you're climbing or diving your plane, or advantaged and disadvantaged as the game calls it. All of the rules, special dice, tokens and measurement tools are included inside the starter set, and if you're more in a historical gaming than sci-fi or fantasy gaming, then this might be right up your street. If you do decide to take this game a little further, there are lots of other types of planes for sale by Warlord. However, it's worth noting that these tend to be single piece metal planes and not plastic like those in the starter set. In my original video, I included Warhammer Underworld Shadespire, and as that game has moved into its third season now and has actually become easier to play casually, it makes sense to have it here too. You can pick up a more simplified set called Champions of Dreadfane, which may well suit some players. However, for only £10 more, I'd recommend you picking up the full two-player intro set, which sees two new warbands, tokens, cards and boards, which will be usable should you wish to expand the game further into the future. The minis do come on plastic sprues, so you will need some clippers or a sharp knife. However, they're coloured plastic, so painting isn't required to tell them apart, and the models are push fit, and don't technically need to be glued together. What's also good news is starting with Season 3, if you should pick up additional warbands, they will come with a playable card pack out of the box, which is perfect for more casual players, and so the deck building aspect we saw in Seasons 1 and 2 is less critical, unless you either want to do it, or you decide to try and go uber competitive. Now, Games Workshop make arguably the best miniatures in the market. They're more readily available than some other games, and there's always a large community of players if you get hooked. With an improved access point for newer players, I think Beast Grave is an even better bet than Shadespire was back in 2018. Star Wars games are no new thing, and Legion isn't new either. Originally releasing in March 2018, the game had some high expectations. Fantasy Flight Games put their weight behind it, and after the success of X-Wing, along with the Star Wars license itself, plus the core box giving us the opportunity to pit Luke against Vader, this was hugely exciting. Sadly, however, a poor release schedule, slipped dates, and initially very similar waves of white armoured Imperials versus brown clothed rebels didn't see the game hit the market the way it possibly should have. Fast forward to the end of 2019, and FFG released a second starter box bringing the Clone Wars era, which would see extra factions available to play, and the steady releases throughout 2018 and 2019 means there's a lot more choice now, with Han Solo, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, and the Emperor 
along with Tauntauns, Dewbacks and Vehicles. Star Wars Legion is a fun game to play, and the very different movement rules which are simple to understand for beginners, along with some very nice models, definitely make the game feel like Star Wars, which is actually a huge draw. If you're new to tabletop miniature gaming or introducing someone new, the models are not so difficult to build. Clear instructions from FFG help this, and the theme of the game is very easy to understand. If you're a Star Wars fan, you're already into the lore and the universe, and you know exactly what the aim of the game is. Recently, FFG have released rules for playing at a lower points cost, which means getting started in the game is now even easier. If you're looking for that tabletop experience with an army rather than a small warband, you could do a lot worse than use Legion as your entry point. There are a lot of games on the market now, and that means a very wide and diverse world to choose to play your games in. With that in mind, I'd like to offer up something that may well have flown under a lot of people's radars. Burrows and Badgers is a skirmish game, which sees you building small warbands of anthropomorphic animals. The game is set in the Kingdom of Northumbra, which is a fantasy world which may well be based upon the real part of the world where I live. Fighting over ruined buildings, haunted forests and misty marshes, the aim of the game is to defeat your opponent, while keeping your characters alive and developing their skills and abilities. You have the choice of rabbits, hares, badgers, mice and foxes to name but a few, and there's a fun progressive campaign inside the gorgeous rulebook. The minis are really well sculpted and produced by Osworn Games, and they come as single piece metal minis, so if you're a fan of old school sculpting, you'll absolutely love these. The game is simple enough and priced perfectly to dip your toe in. You do only need a handful of minis to get started playing, however you may well feel that need to pick up lots of different animals once you get your hands on them. It's perfect to introduce gamers who may well not be attracted to the mass market sci-fi and fantasy games and are looking for something a little more unusual. Lastly, I've included a game which I still think stands the test of time and I still think is the best miniatures game to introduce new players with. That game is The Walking Dead All Out War. Now, whilst the game is based upon the comics rather than the TV series, the concept and the story is the same, so fans of the TV show will still feel engrossed in this. The quality of the single piece plastic minis are both very detailed sculpts, whilst not being overwhelmingly so that could put a beginner off maybe taking a brush and paint to them. The game is very much narrative in its approach of playing out the storylines, however if you do feel the need for a more competitive approach, Mantic now do a rule set called Call to Arms, which is aimed at a more tournament minded gamer, but uses all of the same models. Personally I still much prefer All Out War, you can play the game solo, either to teach yourself the game or just play more games when opponents aren't available. Being able to play cooperatively alongside your potential new gaming buddy and fight off the walkers together is huge as it feels less confrontational when you're just getting started and can really help you to get people involved. You can of course then go on to play player versus player, with the walkers being a problem to both of you whilst you try and grab those all important supplies. The game has a very loyal community who continue to play and support this game and Mantic have already announced further releases which are planned this year in 2020. The game may well be 3 years old now, but it hasn't lost any of its original appeal and it's always my recommendation when anyone asks for a good place to get started in miniature gaming. Well there's my 5 recommendations, however some honourable mentions would be Warcry. I love the game, but the fact the starter set is now out of print, and the minis and terrain take a little bit more in hobby skills, I think it would be a great game to be shown by someone, but maybe not the easiest first steps for someone who's never played or hobbied before. God tier. This is a new game, which sees some very well priced starter boxes, along with single piece coloured plastic minis. It's a game based upon hex based combat, without the deck building of underworlds. The only reason this isn't in my top 5 is, I haven't played it yet, but I'm hearing nothing but great things about it, so it's probably one to watch for. Marvel Crisis Protocol Perfect subject matter for a new gamer who's into the Marvel Universe. There's two reasons it didn't make my shortlist. One is, I haven't played it yet, and two, I'm hearing that the minis are quite fiddly to put together, which is quite frustrating if this is your first step into miniature gaming, and it could quite easily put off new players. Once I've actually played the game, maybe I'll forgive the ease of building issues and recommend it as one of those top games to get new players into miniature gaming in 2020.